Hello, welcome back to Grumpa's workshop. You're very welcome. I'm Loz and today I thought I'd have a little bit of a chat as part of my Sunday roundup. Have a brief review of what we've done over the past six months and what my plans are in the workshop and on the channel coming up in 2022. Well, first of all, the past week. The past week, mm, I finished that uh, scale mock-up of the drive gate for number one sun and the the, uh, the lap and notch joints turned out okay but I messed up the fitting of the diagonal cross member and I haven't another piece to do it again but at least I've learned how to do it full size so that will be ongoing. The past week you've seen me three short workflow videos where I talked about the boiler suit and marking out pencils and I was made up with the comments section. Everybody got involved and chipped in. And I was amazed at how many people actually wear a boiler suit, even if they call them coveralls. And there was a discussion about work wear and just wearing your casual stuff, which if you're anything like me, ends up as scuffs, according to the missus. And then you end up with all scuffs and no casual because you nipped out of the garage thinking you wouldn't be messy. And then you were. Anyway, that was good. Uh, also, over the past week, I, I took delivery of three big boxes. Oh, wonder what they are. And I've been videoing the editing, the unboxing and the editing of them. And you'll be seeing them over the next week. They'll be dropping. Uh, I've also dragged my little drawing board out of retirement and what i've been doing is plotting out on a scale plan of the garage what i want to do in the garage this year which brings me to plans for the workshop 2021 it was a good start but it was marked by me dithering over purchases and then once i decided struggling with the availability and over the past six months i've been thinking long and hard about those skills i lack that i want to develop over the next couple of years and the kit I need in order to do that, especially for specific projects that, that I've got in the pipeline uh, as part of my ambitions. The big decision I have struggled with was keeping the gar garage as a multitasking space. Do you remember allowing the Franken bench, woodworking bench to push up against this end allowing me to get the car in in bad weather and then push the car out use this half for woodworking and that half is a small photography portrait studio and then the murphy table behind me on that back bench coming down for my still life and product shots well the photography i haven't done very much of for over a decade and of course the iphones have killed killed most of small studio setups anyway for family pictures so i made a, a big decision uh big change this year <sighs> Ooh, i'm gonna do away with the multitasking and it's all going to expand into a permanent shop with big pieces of equipment more or less filling the, the space i mean the death knell was the bandsaw <laughs> and then the portable Rack shut, rack saw table on the junior Stanley saw horses that's too heavy to put up and down quickly, so it stayed there. So it's going to be a full workshop, and I'll be keeping the big band saw, the wage five table saw, the DIY MF, MFT rack saw table, and yes, a router table. I'm going for a standalone table, although. I promise I'm not giving up the idea of putting perhaps a trim router table in the extension wing of the Rage 5. So that's still on the cards. Uh, exciting times. As I say, and I'm doing proper dust collection. That's one of the big boxes. Uh, now, the big boxes that came include the dust extractor and the router table. And yes, it is standalone. Uh, and detailed videos of those unboxings will follow and the, the shape of the studio, I might even colour this in 
and do a show and tell on what I'm planning. But it's all going to... The idea is, is that there'll be no more taking half an hour, an hour out of my day to set stuff up, move stuff around and then dismantle it and put it away. Everything will be to hand and usable instantly. Right. What else? Well, following on, I've got to upgrade my hand tool dust extraction with a decent vacuum because it's that old ash can thing that sucks and blows and scatters everything everywhere. So I'm getting a decent shop vac for my power hand tools. Uh, and I'll be putting the little scroll saw on its own stand. So again, it's permanently out to be used and save me time on my workflow. I'm also gonna be putting, as I think I intimated, the bench grinders and sanders on their own uh, wall stands so I can get to them. And it was pushed back with breaking my budget on the bandsaw, but I will get round to the roof insulation and the cushion floor tiling before winter next year. <laughs> and lighting, lighting. Now, plans for the channel. Firstly, if you've been paying attention to my sub count, you'll see I've passed 2,000 watch hours and I'm slowly creeping up to the 500 subs. I never thought I'd get anywhere like that. So I'm halfway to the magic 1,000, 4,000 trigger point for monetization, And we'll talk about that later. Uh, but with 500 subs, as though I might have peaked early, so we'll have to see. Uh, I can open up the community tab page, which appeals to me because it means I can then get into deeper interaction with you subscribers to develop a community without having to split my attention across multiple social media platforms. Remember old dog new tricks? It's shorthand for I'm a bit too lazy to learn Facebook and Instagram as well as YouTube. But anyway, where we go. 75 videos in, I've also been paying attention to what I like making and how I like making it, as well as what does really well in terms of clicks, views, subscribers and comments. I think of you may see where this is going. A couple of the videos are packaged with more clickbaity thumbnails and included uh, terms like unboxing and reviews and put hashtags in with the names of products. I've got disproportionately higher views than everything else, <coughs> but with very low view times and a few subscribers or comments. In fact, I think I've gained some viewers and then lost them when they realise it's not a, a snappy uh, commercial production of unboxing and reviews and it's me rambling so there's that low-key videos with me just talking about what i'm getting up to result in much lower views but longer view times and more comments now i mentioned how i like the comments so that might give you a flavor of the way i'm going let's talk about my channel branding if you could even aspire to that term we're far enough in now to realise that we're well into the last of the summer wine territory with my channel. My subs, with all due respect, are overwhelmingly blokes who are middle-aged or into the retire, retired age ranges. They're either looking to fill their retirement with agreeable pottering, or if you're younger and still working, with weekend projects. Now I have a lot of skills to learn, and the guys ahead of me have been very helpful and supportive and inspirational to be honest and some of you guys seem to find my grumpy enthusiasm and floundering about as inspirational in itself i have no idea why i started the channel as you know as a video diary for myself and family and as a sort of virtual men in sheds channel uh, just to get the company i was gobsmacked when i passed 100 subs and i still am at 500 well, we'll see whether I've picked or not, but hopefully it'll get you get me past the 500 in time for my birthday in February with enough slack. So I'll be confident in keeping that community tab. So I thought I'd, I'd give you a bit of a flavour where my head is at because I am niche and I am my own person and perhaps don't have the same view as 
most other YouTube creators. So I'll start with what I'm not planning to do this year. I'm not going to morph into a slick gear review channel for the clicks and the monetization. In fact, to be honest, if I ever make a thousand subs, I'm determined not to monetize the channel at all. Because to be honest, in video ads drive me bats when I'm watching them. So I don't see why I should sign up for inflicting you lot with it. Is that, does that sound right? right? And I'm not going to follow the, I've watched far too much how to be a YouTuber video. You know I'm addicted. But I've watched far too much advice on these get big quick YouTube channels. Uh, it's not for me. I'm not slick or fast or organised or motivated enough. If I like stuff, I'll provide links. But I'm too lazy to monetize these either. And, you know, it's caveat emptor. Remember, Gumpa. If I like it, I'll tell you I like it. If I don't, I don't. No sponsorship. No that's for other people. They have the personality and I don't. Right, so I'm not planning on changing up the style or the production values of the channel, except you'll have noticed things are a lot clearer and the lighting's better since I switched from the old Fuji with a boom mic to the iPhone. 4K is brilliant and it, it's little AI. The computer sorts out all the contrast and colour and monitoring for me. It saves me hours of editing time. But going from the Fuji to the iPhone, I've lost my boom mic. And although it echoed a bit, uh, you notice if you've watched any of my videos, I have a soft voice and a speech impediment. And I tend to wander off and take my eyes off the camera and my mouth off the camera. Some people find it difficult to hear even turned up. So one of the things I am going to do to improve the channel is get a Lavalier mic, which should stop me voice training off. But uh, look forward to seeing Gumpa going ass over tip as he trips over the cable because he's too mean to fork out for a wireless mic. That may come back end of next year. What I am planning on doing well, as I say, I'm up, up in the, the sound, eventually along with the rubber floor to protect my aching joints and the roof insulation, which got carboshed by doubling my budget on the bandsaw. They'll be going in and I'll be putting better lighting in. It's all going to be part of. I've got to improve timber storage where I'm not start getting timber in. I've got a lot of these. Where's the basically office shelving up above the up and over door at the sides and every time I open the door or I go up in there it bounces timber off so I need a better way of storage so one of my jobs might be one of these floor trolleys at scrap wood store that's one of those that's it. In terms of projects, I've mentioned that before. It's starting simple in, in January and working towards the more complex. Boxes is high on my list as I'm going for a standalone router table. Uh, small musical instruments because I'm into the cigar box guitars, although I might make the little and a little ukulele. Mm. That might be there. And then progressing as I go on. You, you can expect random tool reviews, but they will be my usual waffling and floundering about tool reviews. So it'll be tool reviews of stuff I've got to further stuff, not getting stuff in for the sake of doing reviews. You know what I mean. You yeah, know what I mean. So that's about it. All change. Big change to the workshop. And I'm going to be doing more projects. I can't keep up three or four a week. It's obvious that, isn't it? I'm going to run out of stuff to buy and review for one thing. Uh, so it's going to be a Sunday roundup. And then I'm hoping to be able to, to get one small decent project a week for 52 weeks. Uh, <laughs> watch this space. Uh, what, what else was I going to say? And that's about it, I think. Yep. 
time's getting on on a Sunday evening for me to edit this and get it up for a Sunday evening. I'm off for a cup of Yorkshire tea first. Nana's making me switch to decaf. Ooh, horrible. What am I going to do for me fix? Yorkshire tea's got more caffeine than coffee in. So expect me to have the jitters in the coming week. It's for me own good. It's for me own good, I know. So you crack on. I'm off for me brew and I'll post this up tonight if I can get it out. Take care, guys. Enjoy yourselves. I am.